What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Shoots with Coots and today we're going to be scanning our film with a digital camera and see what kind of results we can get. So first of all guys, I should say that I, in the Boxing Day sales this year, I finally decided to pull the pin and I bought myself an Epson V600 uh, flatbed scanner because I was getting sick of just once I developed my film, waiting for it to dry, and then jump in the car and drive down to the you know local lab and drop it off, and that would give me great scans, and you know I would have to pay for it. But I was getting sick of it. I was sick of the drive. I thought it'd be better, you know, if I could just do everything myself, be fully self-sufficient. That'd be great. Um, now the problem is I mostly shoot 35 mil, as you guys know. Um, I did have a Yashica 124G, a, a 6x6 medium format camera, um, and the Epson, fantastic scanning medium format, like, does a great job, it is awesome, can't recommend those flatbeds for medium format enough, but for 35mm, those of you who know, they are horrendous, like, they, they suck, they flat out suck at scanning 35mm, it's, it's no good, um, it's a pain in the ass, um, and the amount of time you have to spend post-processing is crap. So I sold the scanner, sold the medium format camera because I didn't really use that, you know, shoot that very often at all. So just, you know, just 35 mil as I, I like to shoot these days. And then I thought, okay, let's see if, you know, what about scanning with my digital camera? Um, and I looked into it and I decided, I didn't have a macro lens, I should say that. I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a macro lens. So what I bought was, This, this is a Fuji 16 millimeter uh, extension tube. So essentially turning a normal Fuji lens into a macro lens. It was 109 Australian dollars, I got it from DigiDirect, um, because I was like, let's try it this way. I'm not spending a couple, you know, what, five, six, seven hundred bucks on a macro lens. I'll try it with this first, and then if the results are really good, then maybe down the track. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna scan some black and white film um, using my X-Pro2, uh, which is why this is such crappy video quality because I'm filming with my iPhone right now because I only have the one digital camera that can shoot uh, video. So, apologies for that, but we're gonna be using the X-Pro2. Uh, I'll show you the setup I've been using to scan um, and then I'll compare the results to my lab scanner. Now, my lab has a Fuji Frontier uh, SP500, so a really good high quality scanner, um, and I've always got, you know, they've been giving me amazing results whenever I go down and get them to scan my files. Um, so we're going to compare the scans I got from them to the ones I've done at home on the X-Pro2. So let's do it. So guys, this is the setup. Now, what you're going to see is I tried to do this, you know, manually hand-holding and using a tripod, and it just didn't work, and then I'm an idiot and I realized, hey, I've got, I've got a, you know, an enlarger. So as you can see, I actually can take off my uh, enlarger portion off my stand here. And then, as you can see, I've screwed in a, a smaller tripod with the Fuji mounted directly below it. Now, the best thing I've found, because trying to hold the, you know, the negatives in place is a pain in the ass. So I'm actually using the negative carrier from my enlarger to hold the slide in place. Now, for a makeshift light box, I've got a piece of Perspex, I've got a, a video light, which um, you know has goes up, up and down with the different Kelvin um, scales. So I've got that set up in a box, <laughs> piece of Perspex on top. This is a real low budget setup, which I want to show you guys. You don't need really expensive stuff to do this at home. So, negative carrier sits there. Obviously, I am not using, if you can probably tell, I am not using a Fuji lens. Um, what I found is, this is why I want to disclaimer first, if you are willing to do this with Fuji, do not buy the MCX-16. Do not buy it. Get the, the this is a 16 mil tube. Get the 11 mil tube, because what I found is, it turns the, the, the close focusing distance um, you know, this is my 23mm uh, Fuji F2 lens. It makes it so, so close that the depth of field is thrown out so, like, just too far. You can barely fit a full 35mm frame, uh, 35 negative, I should say, in the frame, um, and you get that close. So what I'm actually using is, I'm using my Leica 35mm lens uh, with an adapter and then the macro, um, well, the extension tube. Um, so that gives me a, a, you know, really quite a close distance, but not as close as I was doing with this. But, you know, I get plenty plenty of room to work with. 
um, you know, super sharp Leica lens as well, which is great. Um, manual focus, obviously, we got focus peaking turned on. Um, and then what I do is, because we don't want any shake whatsoever, I use the Fuji app, which is um, obviously Wi-Fi connect the phone, which I'm filming this with right now, to the camera. Everything's dead still. You know, uh, F16 ISO, the lowest setting at 100. Uh, it comes out at like, you know, a tenth of a second or a fifth of a second or something. Take the shot, which I already have. Now we're gonna jump into Lightroom, have a look at the results, and then compare the actual photo or scan I've taken to one from the Fuji um, SP500 Frontier scanner. So let's do that. All right, guys, so now this is the image that I have taken. So as you can see here, we've got the obviously TIFF file and the JPEG. We'll work with the TIFF because obviously you always get more information with the TIFF file. Um, so obviously I've already dragged that into Lightroom. So here we go now. So we get fairly you know good coverage using that, um, that lens and the adapter. Um, so obviously first thing we're gonna do now is good old crop. Okay, so let's quickly crop. This bad boy, as close as we can get it. I'm not going to go too be too anal with this because I just want to quickly show you guys the sort of results you can get. Okay, so first things first, what I do is invert the image. So curves and pretty much reverse your tone curve, and it's going to give you you know a weird color balance, obviously because of the light. So next step, saturation all the way down. Okay, next thing I like to do is drag my uh, curve slider to obviously we can see all the information here in the histogram I would just like to drag it to you know sort of a, a little bit before the information starts for the highlights and the likewise for the shadows until I kind of like what I'm seeing and I go yeah that's kind of nice I like con you know punchy contrast images all right next thing okay now we can start working our way from the top obviously maybe bump up the exposure and remember all of this guys is just when we get to this stage here it is just you know personal preference it's kind of you know it just depends what you guys like you know they're your images you know you can make them any way you want so pretty much just made a few minor adjustments that's it I don't like to do much especially to film photos because I feel like once you start doing too much post-processing you're losing the whole, the whole point you know of why you shoot film in the first place um, anyway now this is the important section that I have found so sharpening uh, this is just my, what I've you know to get the best results I put sharpening up to you know 80 or 90 um, the radius I put to 2 and detail I put to 50 okay now you can if you really want enable profile corrections but you know I don't think you need to guys but that's it that's it. Now those settings again, what I've been doing, 89 sharpening, radius of two and detail 50. That's it, nice and quick. Now let's export this bad boy and compare it. Um, call this muffin. This is the photo I'm using. This is a photo of my rabbit. I took it probably, it's just a negative I found lying around to do a test with. Uh, we'll call it muff, uh, muff test. I've tried to do this already before. So we'll export this one, muff test. And where are we? I've tried to done it a couple times already to see my results. So where are you? Let's wait for this bad boy to there we go. Now that is done. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do guys is I am gonna pull up the scan from the lab. What's this yeah, here we go. It's one of these from memory. No, not one of my employees at Subway store, no. Here we go, here's a baby rabbit. Alright. But this scan right here, this is from the local camera house I go to, and this is using their Fuji Frontier. Um, well, yes, yeah, Frontier SP500. All right, now, and this is, you gotta excuse the dust. These negatives were lying around so much that, uh, you know, we got a, a little bit of scratches on them. So, okay, Fuji right in front of us now. Fuji SP500, really good. Like, look at that, we got lots of, you know, Zooming in, I suppose it's 35 mil still, but we've got lots of detail um, in the rab, well, my muffin, called muffin, muffin's chest hair here. Nice and detailed, as you can see, you know, the all the letters uh, on the bag hanging on the chair there are nice and sharp, like really, really good image. Um, 
Now obviously this has got a slight like sepia cast to it because it's a color scanner and I never corrected it, um, which is why the, the image that we've just done is gonna look a little bit different, but you can see the quality there. All right, now this is the image we have just processed in Lightroom. Now as you can see, still got a bit of noise, a bit of grain, but the grain I think is a bit more pronounced because of all the sharpening and stuff we did to it. But let's zoom in on the rabbit here because this is the main focus of that photo. We've got the detail here um, in the window frames and, and, and you know especially on the chest here of the rabbit. Now when we zoom in here, we can see, let's just make these so we can kind of see them both guys, so you guys can see for yourself. It's not bad. You know, I mean obviously we've got a scratch here, but I think that considering that the photo on the left is with, you know, a top end, you know, pe complete PC dedicated film scanner, and this is one that I have quickly just done myself, you know, in a fraction of the time it would take you to do it with a flatbed scanner. With an Epson flatbed, it would, you know, you'd still be going. You wouldn't have even finished all your scans. You know, the amount of time you can, you know, quickly, essentially, how quick you can just, you're taking a photo of a negative. It's super, super quick, but look at that. That is not bad. It's not as good. I'll definitely say that. Like, if I was ever going to get some real high quality, wanted some obviously high quality scans, I would go to the lab and get them to use the Fuji. Um, but for just general sharing on social media, and especially if you guys follow me, you know what I like to do, I obviously have the white border. So we have, you know, I have the white border, so the photo is going to look essentially like that on an Instagram landing page. And that looks pretty damn good from there, you know? That looks pretty damn good. Even if we zoom out on the Fuji scan, the Frontier scan, and compare the two, again, that's pretty good. And hey, but that is pretty damn good considering that we've done it with a digital camera, it's not a dedicated scanner, you know, and just with a makeshift setup in my uh, little back office room. Not bad at all. So there you go, guys. You know, a relatively uh, cheap way. You know, obviously, you've all got a digital camera line around the house. Or, you know, everyone's got one these days. When we're talking about, um, so you know, instead of spending five, six, seven hundred dollars on a scanner, you could just get a cheap extension tube. Like I did, hundred, hundred and ten dollars for an extension tube um, and bits and pieces lying around the house. And now I can scan, you know? And to be honest, looking at the scans coming off, um, you know, using the, 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 the X-Pro2, they are miles ahead of what I was getting out of the V600, like miles ahead. Um, you know, really sharp. Um, and, you know, the amount of post-processing I was doing uh, on the V600 scans compared to probably, well, probably an extra 15 minutes, uh, probably an extra five to 10 minutes per image of editing on the Epson scans compared to what I've just done out of the, the X-Pro2. So I'm saving a lot of time. I reckon I'm personally getting a better image. Um, and I'm pretty happy. Like, you know, if, if you just want a quick way to get those, those scans done, um, it's a fantastic idea, you know? It's, it's, I think it's great. I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out, guys. So if you have any questions, um, hit me up in the comments, guys, because I'm sure there's going to be a few of you who've got a you know, few, like, probably more detailed questions you want to ask me, hit me up in the comments, chuck me a like if you enjoyed it. As always guys, thanks for watching another episode of Shoots with Coops. Happy shooting and I'll catch you in the next one.